I would like to try and give you an insight into the journey of doing mathematics. And I'll start with a, a reasonably famous equation. Um, Euler came up with this. It's a wonderful equation that generates primes. So if you put in some number n, and then you square n, and then you subtract n from that, and then you add on 41, you always get a prime number. Well, for all n's? Well, pick an n, Brady. What, what are we going to do? Well, let's start with 1. Okay, 1. Okay, so you know, I love it. You know what? I'm even going to turn it into a table. You don't have to do them in order. If we do 1, so 1 squared is 1, minus 1 plus 41 equals 41. And that, my friend, is a prime number. Okay, you don't have to do 2 next. What would you like? Um, 2. 2. You can do 2 next, and indeed you will. So, uh, we've now got 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is 2, plus 41 equals 43, and that is prime. Uh, Isn't that special? That is good. I'll do one more. I'll do yeah. 10. 10, right. So, thank you for making something that's reasonably easy to compute. So, that's going to be 100 minus 10 plus 41 equals 131, and that is prime. This must break. This does break, yeah, 100% correct. No, you're right, it, you'd be very suspicious. There are patterns in the primes, and I get a lot of emails from people saying, oh, wouldn't it be amazing if I found a pattern in the primes? I'm like, there are patterns in the primes. Uh, this one is interesting in that it works perfectly all the way down until you put in the number 41. Because if you think about it, 41 squared is gonna be a multiple of 41, 41 is a multiple of 41, 41 is a multiple of 41, the combined thing is going to be a multiple of 41. So it works for zero, and then it works all the way up for every single other number. And once you get to 41, it breaks. And when Euler discovered this, they were very excited. And so they, they put this out into the world, and it's used as a nice example of how Partly that the primes can have interesting surprises, and partly that you can't trust a pattern just because it works for a long time. Does it keep working out? Like, is it only multiples of 41 that break it, or do other things break it? That's a good question. I don't know. Oh. We could check. <laughs> <laughs> does, well, does 42 work? For, for, well, let's do 42. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's put in 42. So, uh, 42 squared, just off the top, top of my right. hand. <laughs> do, would you believe... 1,764 minus 42 plus 41 equals 1,763. That looks prime-ish. It possibly is prime. Let's, uh, again, just off the yeah. top of my head. Come on, it's got to be prime. No! It's not! No, it's divisible by 1, 41, and 43. Oh, it's the difference of two squares. Because it's the difference between this and 1. So that's going to have n minus 1 and n plus 1 as factors, which is why you got 41 um, and 43, either side of 42. Oh, there you go. So I'm going to mark that as a no. That's a no. Not prime. So it's kind of, you start to wonder now, is the fact that it works for every single one just a coincidence? Does 41 have any meaning behind it? Or is, is it, you know, was it just lucky dip? You check enough numbers, one of them's gonna work. So I got curious, I was like, well, what other numbers does this work for? If I change this number here, 41, what other values could I put there such that if I put in every number smaller than them in for n, I always get a prime? Because it's always going to break when n equals... It's always going to break when n e whenever n equals this number on the end, it's going to break. But I was like, well, are there other numbers for which it works or everything below it? Oh man, I can't wait to find out what you learned. Guess what? What? There are. There are other ones? Yeah. And they were, they were already, they were already known. Uh, okay, so let's do smaller first. Okay, so uh, let's do a new bit of paper. Okay, so... Here's, what we're, we're, I don't know what we're going to call that number on the end. Yeah, what is that? Oh, uh, like a mad, like a... Uh, tail, tail, it's got to be tail or something endy. Yeah, right? the caboose. The caboose. The caboose. Yes. All right, I like it. C, is that C-A-B? 
I don't know how you spell caboose. Caboose. The part at the back of a train where the person who is in charge of the train rides. C-A-B-O-O-S-E. -O -O I was confident enough with the C. Matt, you've just invented caboose numbers. Caboose numbers. Well, sadly, I'm not first to the party, given Euler. Euler did this, so... He didn't call them caboose numbers. He did not call them caboose numbers. It works for the following numbers. Now, let's get this right. This is when you put in n squared, you subtract n, and then you add on c, which is our caboose number. Yep. And if you put in 5, it works. So if you put in 0 through 4, you get 100% primes. If you put in 11, you get 100% primes from 0 all the way up to 10. If you put in 17, you get 100% primes. All primes so far, um, interestingly. And then as we already discovered, if you put in 41, you get 100% primes. We have now caught up with Euler. And so I saw this and I was like, I can't, I mean, what's up with these numbers? And what's the next one? So I did the first step in the mathematician's journey, which is write some terrible Python code. So, so I knocked out some terrible Python code to find the next number. And uh, guess what it is? Is it prime? Uh, no, I, I couldn't find another one. You couldn't find one? Nah. I checked up to a quarter of a million, 250,000. And the thing is, it slows down. You write the terrible Python code and you set it going. And quite early, it's, it's easy because this has got to check like the 41 numbers from zero to 40 below it. Boom, knocks it out. Uh, above 41, nothing. So I was like, well, what's, what's the best I can get? So like the best percentage. Best percentage. So let me, actually, you know what? I can even bring the code up and run it. Let's... Okay, here's the code, that's it. It's not, I mean, that's the whole thing. It's not, it doesn't take much. And some of this is machinery. This is uh, like, you know, saving out the results. This is giving me updates as it goes. So every 4,000 seconds, like roughly every hour, it will give me an update. For our purposes, let's make that 40 seconds. So if we run it, we'll actually see updates. And then this is the code. And I've, I've used an out of the box prime check. Uh, and then that's it. So we'll run it and we'll see what it spits out. There we go. So it almost instantly found uh, 357, so it, I didn't bother doing three because all the small ones, one, two, three, I found a bit trivial. So I, you know, I consider five the first prime number. So, so, there, so those are the percentages, are they? And these are the percentages. So seven, we didn't have seven on our list, but it, two thirds of the values for seven are prime. So that's not bad. Then there's 41 that we had, 100%. So I put a threshold of a half, but it doesn't bother displaying anything that's below a half. Because I figure if it's like less likely than not that the numbers are prime, it doesn't really count. Like at least you want better than even odds that it's spitting out primes. And so it kicks out a couple and uh, then, base then nothing. So after 377, it never goes above 50% primes. Mm. And 377 is barely above it. The best one we got is here. So that's 68% for 101. So I feel like that can be an honorary near caboose and that's as good as it gets ever again. Huh. Further numbers I've checked. I mean, I know it seems pretty unlikely then, but imagine if there is another caboose out there. Oh, wouldn't it be now? We cannot, we can't, we can't rule it out. Don't forget the original moral of the story of these numbers is that you, don't, you can't trust a pattern. And I've only checked up to a quarter of a million. So there could be bigger ones out there. And I, at this point I was like, I didn't get to do the whole journey. So I decided to scrap this and I came up with a different idea for this video, if that's okay. Oh, okay, so yeah, sh forget this. Should just, I not uh, be recording? No, oh, it's fine, Le leave it in, like just, okay. just for texture. Okay. But now we'll get to the main event. So that was the preamble. Yeah, that's the pre- yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get to business. Well, all right then, stay tuned for the, uh, the main course. That will be coming very soon on Numberphile. And while you wait, can I highly recommend Matt's latest book, Love Triangle. 
It's available to order now. You can actually get special editions signed by Matt by clicking on the link that I'll put down in the video description. Or you can just buy it from all the usual places where you buy books. Definitely one for mathematics fans and for people who also like a bit of a laugh. Move them around as long as they don't cross. The mirror images count the same. They're the same as the original. Nice. I like this guy. Yeah. He's got, I, I really, I like the cut of his jib. 